This is medieval. It's the Dark Ages view of our economy. It makes Tony Abbott look like a man of the future. <laughs> well, I exaggerate. Um, <laughs> but you get where I'm going. How on earth can anyone offer themselves as Prime Minister of Australia if they do not have a plan for education? Let me make this point very clearly. Australia does not have to choose between a growing economy and great schools. We cannot have a growing economy without great schools. <laughs> Friends, this can be the education election, a referendum on the future of education in our country. With your hard work, with your passion, your advocacy, this can be the election where Australians choose great schools over a tax break for multinationals. <laughs> Labor will be the guardians of the case to put to Australians where we can choose properly paid and properly supported teachers over a double tax cut for the very few wealthy people. The contrast is that sharp. The difference is that stark. A Labor Party investing in education and a Liberal Party protecting the top end of town. When I stand here and promise you that Labor will put people first, this begins with our commitment to education. Over the next 10 years, a Labor government will invest $37 billion to guarantee that every school in every postcode receives fair funding on the basis of need. We will deliver on the Gonski promise and go beyond it. As the son of a teacher, as the father of three fantastic kids, and as Prime Minister, I will make it my mission to ensure that every child in every school gets every opportunity for a world-class education. Our kids deserve nothing less. Yeah. Now, as you know, we're not talking about more money for more of the same for teachers and principals. Our policy means certainty and security. An end to the education wars where every three years schools have to worry about will there be continuity of funding. We will give a 10-year guarantee of the right resources, more individual attention and classroom help, more support for students with special learning needs so their parents of these precious kids are not made to feel like outcasts and bullies for demanding that the system help them. <laughs> more extension programs to challenge the bright kids, more choice for students in science, in art, in music and in sport. And for students and parents, it means better results improve literacy and numeracy. And above all, it means a new sense of hope for the children who once had only hoped to scrape through to year 12. They'll now be aiming for TAFE and for university for more opportunity in their lives as adults. This is not hypothetical. This is not a bit of theorising. This is not that trickle-down economics of Mr Turnbull's $50 billion tax cut for multinationals. You and I have seen what teachers and their students are capable of. My outstanding Shadow Minister for Education, Kate Ellis, and I have spent the week in Queensland classrooms. <laughs> and by the way, we started this campaign in regional Queensland, Cairns, Rockhampton, Mackay, Townsville, <laughs> Brisbane. 
Someone forgot to tell Mr Turnbull this week that the Brisbane line doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but what we've seen in these remarkable schools is students falling in love with learning. But we see the teachers selling the raffle tickets. We know the stories of the parents baking the cakes to help fill the holes in the school budget. These schools, these communities, they deserve a government prepared to help them. They deserve a government, a Labor government, which will do exactly what we say, which is properly fund our schools. $725 million more alone to back up what Anastasia is doing in Queensland for Queensland schools in 2018 and 2019. This is real money, real improvements, yet the Liberal Party seem to think that they can still score points against our plan for schools. And never forget, just a month ago, this Prime Minister, in one of his trademark waffles, was talking about, in the perfect world, the Turnbull world, <laughs> he said that it's really best if the Commonwealth doesn't bother funding those jolly blighters in the state system. The only idea that he has had for education policy, seriously, is to cut every single Commonwealth dollar from every single government school. Well, let me promise the parents of Australia, you are taxpayers. The taxpayers of Australia legitimately expect that when they pay their taxes to Canberra, that some of that money will be returned as investments in our schools, in educating our children. Now, suddenly, with the election, the shadow of the election right upon us, after three years of cutting $30 billion from our schools, after pretending day after day in Parliament that the cuts they made didn't exist or didn't matter, now the Liberals will say they will put a billion back. <laughs> They've emptied buckets out of education. Now they're offering us a cup full back. And for this, Mr Turnbull expected a round of applause. They expected Australians to forgive and forget because it's never been a more exciting time. <laughs> but Australians remember. They remember the last time that the Liberals promised no cuts to, e no cuts to education. They remember Tony Abbott's unity ticket. <laughs> they remember Christopher Pine was education minister. <laughs> And when they hear Liberal ministers lecturing teachers, telling teachers that you're the issue, just do more and more with less and less, waving those glasses and saying, more money doesn't solve the problem, Australians know that the only people who ever say that money doesn't matter are those for whom money has never been a problem. Mr Turnbull thinks that, he went, thinks that the fact that he went to school with his friend David Gonski is the same as delivering Gonski to our schools. <laughs> Name dropping is not an education policy, is it? <laughs> if you really believe in needs-based funding, then you have to deliver the funding to meet those needs. We hear a lot of talk from this Prime Minister about innovation. But Australia cannot be an innovation nation unless we are an education nation. <laughs> we cannot compete for the jobs of the future without great schools, better trained, properly paid teachers. We will never get smarter as a nation or more prosperous as a nation by cutting money from our schools. Friends, friends, I tell you what will be one of the important issues in this election will be education. In 49 days, millions of Australians will be walking through the gates of their local school, in assembly halls and classrooms and gymnasiums across our country, Australians will be voting 
on the future of schools in this country. When this day comes for that decision, my message to Australians is simple. Choose Labor because Labor has chosen education and I make this final promise to all of the teachers who work so hard in education. You understand better than most that the sort of message our society gives our kids rests in what we prioritise. And I can promise every teacher in every school this promise. We will restore the status of education in teaching to the rightful pinnacle it deserves to be. And we tell our young people that our schools are important, we tell them what we think is important as a nation, and it is education. Thank you, everyone. That is Bill Shorten, opposition leader, addressing the party faithful in Brisbane, where uh, education is certainly front and centre Indeed, for the Labor is. campaign uh, for this uh, 2016 Speaking election. very passionately off the back of the uh, first debate we had last night as well. And uh, just emphasising uh, the, the uh, needs-based funding uh, mm -hmm. as the backbone for Gonski, which he says that uh, Labor will fully fund should they be elected. All right, well